Now we're on to the one arm swing proper. We've gone through our one arm deadlift. We've already learned about keeping the bell in its lane. The one arm swing start, we've learned about internal rotation at the shoulder joint, which helps stretch the external rotators, leading to a more packed shoulder at the top of the swing. The one arm swingle, we learn how to counter the rotation that a one arm swing brings to the exercise. And finally, we're on to the one arm swing itself. Now, there are a few different options as far as what you're gonna do with your free hand. I like, when I'm practicing my one arm swings, to keep it in the guard position the whole time, or to alternate between the guard position and a little backswing. The reason I want to be cautious with how much backswing I put in this arm is because if I really let this arm go, it's going to lead to that trunk rotation that we want to avoid. So in order to keep my shoulders square as I backswing, I want to make sure that that hand isn't going too far back. I keep it in line pretty much with my torso. If it goes back here, I'm probably going to open up and get into that rotation that we're trying to fight. There, I'm going to be square. Here, I'm going to be even more square. If you keep the hand that's not on the bell in the guard position the whole time, you'll have a really locked in torso, but it won't necessarily carry over to effective clean technique or effective snatch technique to do that. Why? Because you want the free arms motion to help when you're doing a clean. You want the free arms motion to help when you're doing a snatch. Uh, but if you're just practicing the one arm swing and you're gonna keep it minimalistic, throw it in the guard position, that's fine. Another good option as far as the arm is concerned is to start with it at the side and as you finish your swing, bring it up beside as though you're holding on to a second belt. Back swing, free arm goes to the outside, top level next to the bell that you're actually swinging. This is also a nice way to prepare for our final stage of the one arm swing progression, the hand to hand swing, which is really just another option. So if I want to transfer the bell, I'm going to need that other hand up there and ready to receive it. Whatever you do with that free hand, the important thing is to not let it contribute to torso rotation, whether you're in the back swing or at the top. At the top, that hand might try to stay back here and you're going to let the bell go forward. Well, if I wanted to transfer hands and my other hand was six inches behind the one that has the bell, I'm going to have to go chasing after it. And that's not something you want to chance, especially if you've got cats, children, uh, turtles around, uh, you want to make sure that you're ready to receive that bell. So without further ado, the one-arm swing. Starting off like it's a double swing. Choose what you want to do with your free hand. Maybe narrow the stance a little bit since you really only have one bell to deal with. Load the hips, big air in as you hike. And there you go. So again, you've got a couple of different options as far as what to do with that free hand. We can start with it out to the side and bring it up square at the top. We can go to the side, then into the guard, or we can keep it in the guard. Back swing and park. It's up to you. Um, whatever helps you stay square in the back swing and at the top, whatever prepares you for what you want to do once you learn the one arm swing. So if you're content with the one arm swing, 
being sort of the top end of your hinge practice, keep it in the guard, that's fine. If you wanna move on to cleans, snatches, or even just hand-to-hand -hand swings, figure something else out to do with your free hand that's gonna help you be better prepared for those exercises down the road.